Battery power, it's future for Ford electric vehicles and the impact of two new giant plants being built in Hardin County. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us on the night team. I'm Doug Profit. A public, a very public update tonight uh, drew a crowd of neighbors to Elizabethtown. WHS Live and Night Team's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Emma Gefter have a new look at the massive development and the specific questions from local residents. Construction remains on track. Take a look. The Blue Oval SK plant in Glendale, Kentucky continues to rise out of the ground with huge plants taking shape. In Elizabethtown, residents turned out to get an update where Blue Oval stands now and the near future. We're trying to consider, okay, we're not just bringing in um, thousands of jobs, but you know, how are we going to make sure that people have an opportunity through transportation to get there? Blue Oval representatives discuss jobs available in the area and how onboarding works along with its plans with Elizabethtown Community Technical College. The Kentucky Legislature allocated $25 million to ECTC to construct a training facility on site. A housing program that is set to come in a few years on the ECTC campus will help those who are homeless get back on their feet while providing financial support. They don't have to worry about housing. They can get back on their feet, get the job training that they need because the training center is going to be right next door. Some audience members voice their concerns about construction impacting their property values. But what you're doing out there does affect us quite a bit. Ursula Madden shared how Blue Oval is doing their best to talk with those who live nearby to provide them with updates and answers. So I understand sometimes there's frustration, but I think overall um, people are very positive about Blue Oval SK coming in and the potential jobs that are available. Overall attendees were pleased with the town hall meeting. And I think the staff were very informed and also did a a great job of informing the community of what they are trying to do. Until then, everyone is waiting patiently for construction to be complete. In Elizabethtown, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. Well, battery plants like the one coming to Glendale are part of ongoing negotiations between the United Auto Workers and the big three automakers at the moment. The union wants to represent workers at 10 battery factories to get them top wages. They're also asking for raises and the return of traditional pensions. Businesses beyond the car industry are also keeping an eye on these negotiations. Not far from the Ford assembly plant here in Louisville, employees at Stooges Bar and Grill are wearing pins in support of the union effort. Restaurant manager Mike Smith says they see a steady flow of union workers from Ford, making up about 85% of their revenue. Whether it's before work, after work, or for lunch break, so once we get down to the nitty gritty, you know, it really does, you know, start in our minds about affecting our business. The president of the local UAW chapter, Todd Dunn, tells us he's confident that a deal can get done before that deadline on Thursday evening, but also says union workers are well prepared to strike if necessary. The contract expires at 11.59 p.m. Thursday night. Happening tonight, a proposal to increase services in the popular New Lou District east of downtown. The neighborhood could have business and property owners paying more taxes on East Market Street. Tonight, owners had a chance to ask questions about the proposed business improvement district or called a bid. It's a proposal from the New Lou Business Association. Within the district, property owners would pay more in taxes in exchange for more services like cleaning and safety. We think because we, are, we have some great success here, and crowds come here that when you have more people and more needs that it sometimes outpaces what the city uh, can provide on their limited budgets and so we think there's a possibility that we might want to help pay for some extra services. Organizers expect to have at least one more meeting before June 1st. It'll then be up to the business owners to vote on whether to implement the tax. All new tonight on the night team. We have some positive news tonight from Louisville Metro Police and the family of Metro Police Officer Brandon Haley, who was shot in the line in duty last week and badly injured. In an update on LMPD's Facebook page, Haley's family says he's now off a ventilator and starting to act more like himself, showing off his sense of humor. And they say they're taking his recovery day by day. Officer Haley was shot last week in the torso while conducting a traffic stop in the Chickasaw neighborhood. Investigators say the shots were fired at him from a nearby home. So far, no one has been charged directly with that shooting. 
And new tonight, police have made arrests in two separate deadly hit and runs on Dixie Highway over the weekend. Louisville Metro Police detectives arrested 28 year old Colin Taylor this afternoon on charges of leaving the scene and failure to render aid. According to court records, he turned himself in and admitted to hitting and killing 19 year old Derek Wright Jr. on Dixie Highway near Bernheim Lane last Friday. Police say Wright was hit while he was trying to cross the street. A small memorial is now set up where Wright was hit. Police in Shively say surveillance video also led them to this man, Joseph Martin, after a deadly hit and run at Dixie and Crumbs Lane on Sunday night. In court documents, detectives say Martin ultimately admitted to hitting the other man, adding that he had used meth and drank alcohol just before the crash. He's charged with vehicular homicide, leaving the scene and driving without a license. Family members have identified the man killed as 26 year old Demetric Dryden Danzy and tonight they've been talking with Ian Hardwick about Demetric and the legacy he's left behind. Got wait to the good part. Uh, <laughs> this mother's laughter comes before tears. I want my family and myself to move past this tragedy to be able to smile every day without crying because it's always been constant tears. It's like we'll just bust our crown all of a sudden and then I'll just start laughing. Remember that time when D did X, Y, and Z, you know, or... On Sunday night, Demetric Dryden Danzy was crossing the street at Dixie Highway in Crumbs Lane when a driver hit him. Police say that man then took off. Demetric's family says even at age 26, he brought them joy as he always did. Always laughing, joking, dancing. He thought he was a rapper. <laughs> One day he gonna do is ask you for a dollar. <laughs> Among several titles, lover, hustler, rapper, his mother calls him a fighter too. Born with Down syndrome and digestive issues, Dryden Danzy required a feeding tube and colonoscopy bag until he was a toddler. Then he had open heart surgery, but was proud of the scar. God gave him to me, blessed me with him. I always say he was my blessing. I have seven children and I love all of them, but he was my blessing. He was my special baby. And again, I wouldn't have changed it for nothing in the world. I'm so hurt he's gone. Dryden Danzy's father feels the hurt too and tells me the neighborhood shares the love for his son. He was loved by everyone in this area. He worked several little spots, cleaning up, taking out trash. And everybody from South and Terrace to Walgreens, they just love him. With an arrest made, the family's thankful for Shively Police Department's efforts. It's brought them a step closer to healing, a leap ahead of where Wanda Dryden expected. But I just thank God, in Jesus' name I thank God, that they got this man. And was so quick. Oh, that was such a worry. I didn't think you I to be honest, I thought it was gonna be forever. The only forever left now is how long she'll hold her son in her heart. Ian Hardwit for the WHAS 11 night team on your side. The family has set up a GoFundMe account to help with funeral expenses. If you would like to help them out and donate, we do have a link for you on WHAS11.com. New tonight, a man is under arrest after police say he seriously injured an elderly woman while stealing her car from a St. Matthews gas station. This happened in late July, and we first told you about the incident last month. Officers arrested Dwight Bailey yesterday after identifying him through surveillance video at the Thornton's gas station near Shelbyville Road Plaza. Investigators say the woman had parked her car at the gas station early one morning and left it unlocked while she went inside, and that's when Bailey reportedly got into her car. When the victim came out and confronted him, police say he refused to get out and put the car in reverse, knocking her right down to the ground with the driver's side door. Bailey is charged with robbery and assault, and he has pleaded not guilty. Well, just two days before Churchill Downs begins its September racing meet, a horse racing safety oversight board has released its report on horse deaths at the track that happened this spring. There was not one singular factor or smoking gun that caused the spate of fatalities. That's the conclusion from the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority, federal authorities, after 12 horses died at the track this spring, including two on Derby Day. Investigators say there were a multitude of factors. The report shows the breakdowns happened at different areas on the track, as you see spotted right here. While several injuries involved broken bones, those bones were often different. HISA says there are things the industry can learn from, including studies on the breeding of thoroughbreds. Once we, you know, have that data and have that an, uh, that analysis, we can then engage in conversations that we can do about it. Unless we work together to genuinely make changes that the industry is in jeopardy. We were told Churchill's racetrack was retested again just recently and there were no red flags. ISIS says the track should be good to go for the September meet starting this Thursday.